Have you ever really taken a moment to reflect on what life and death mean in a biblical sense? It's a question that leads us to the very core of our faith and understanding of God's Word. The Bible provides a profound perspective on life and death, and it's crucial for us as believers to grasp this divine truth. Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 5 says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. In this powerful passage, the Bible tells us something profound about the state of humanity. Verse 1 declares that we were dead in our transgressions and sins. This is a stark reminder that anyone living in sin is, in fact, spiritually dead. The phrase, dead in transgressions, speaks to a separation from God, a life devoid of his divine presence and peace. But then, verses 4 and 5 bring us incredible hope. The Bible says, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. This tells us two crucial things, first, that God made us alive with Christ, and second, that we were once dead in our sins. Here's the key takeaway, each of us falls into one of two categories. We are either dead or alive. We are either spiritually dead because we are living for the world, or we are alive because we are living for Christ. The message is clear, life, real life, can only be found in Jesus Christ. Life is not merely the physical existence we experience on earth, life is Jesus Christ. Eternal life is found in him alone. This is why Jesus Christ proclaimed, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is life, and he is the only way to truly live. When you are living in sin, you are separated from the Lord because God is pure and holy. This is why Paul declared in Philippians 1 verse 21, For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Paul understood that real life, eternal life, can only be found in Jesus Christ. The Bible clearly states that the wages of sin is death and that sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. These scriptures emphasize that we are either dead or alive in a spiritual sense. We may be physically alive, but if we are living in sin, we are separated from God, which is the very definition of being spiritually dead. But there is hope. I encourage you to turn to Jesus Christ. Abide in him, live through him, and always seek to be in the presence of the Lord. This is the only way to experience life, real, eternal life. Let us now go to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, for us to live, it's because of you. For us to wake up each morning, it's because of you. For us to be able to breathe, move, see, and hear, this is your grace, this is your goodness. Father, great is your mercy. You are rich in mercy because even though we were dead in sin, you died for us. Lord Jesus, you died for me so that I would live through you. And so, Lord, I praise you for being so loving and so merciful. Your word in Ezekiel 36 verses 25 to 26 says, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean, your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. Lord, I pray that your living waters would flow over our lives and make us clean. May they rejuvenate us and wash away all evil. Transform our hearts, Lord. Change our sinful hearts and give us hearts that are humble, obedient, and passionate about you. Give us hearts, 
Lord Jesus, that live for you. Take away this deceitful heart of mine and give me one that desires to be faithful to you. Lord Jesus, there is only one answer to death, and that is you, because you said that you are the resurrection and the life. Lord Jesus, touch our lives, intensify your presence in our lives as we seek to abide in you. Father, you are the true vine, and Lord, I pray that I would be a branch that bears much fruit. King Jesus, teach me how to abide in your love. Let it be my heart's desire that I would dwell in your presence always. Father, I thank you for giving me life. I thank you for saving me from eternal damnation. It is because of your precious work on the cross that I can live. It's because of you, Lord Jesus, that the power of sin no longer has a hold on me. It's because of you, Master, that I can truly live in victory as an overcomer. Father, help me to be dead to this flesh. Help me to be dead to my sinful desires. And may I live for righteousness, may I live for holiness, and may I live for your kingdom. Be glorified, Lord. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. This prayer is a reminder that in Christ, we have been made alive. Despite our past transgressions, despite the spiritual death we once experienced, through his mercy and grace, we have been resurrected into a new life in him. This is not just a metaphorical resurrection, it is a real, spiritual awakening that brings us into eternal life. The Bible continually calls us to examine ourselves, to see if we are in the faith. Are we alive in Christ, or are we still dead in our sins? The difference is profound and eternal. Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 5 is not just a passage to be read, it's a passage to be lived. It calls us to recognize where we stand, whether in life or in death. If you find yourself struggling with sin, feeling spiritually dead, I urge you to come to Jesus Christ. Only he can bring you back to life. Only he can resurrect your spirit and give you a heart that beats for him. The change that Jesus brings is not just a surface change, it is a transformation of the heart, a renewal of the spirit. He replaces our stony hearts with hearts of flesh, tender and responsive to his voice. The journey of faith is not without its challenges. We may face trials, temptations, and even times when our faith is tested. But remember what Philippians 1 verse 21 says, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Our life, our very existence, should be rooted in Christ. And if we remain in him, even in death, we have nothing to fear, for to die is to gain eternal life with him. As you reflect on these words, I encourage you to examine your heart. Where do you stand today? Are you alive in Christ, or is there an area in your life where you need to surrender more fully to him? Take a moment to pray, to seek his face, and to ask him to reveal to you any areas that need his touch. And if today's message has resonated with you, don't let this be the end of your journey. There's so much more to explore, so much more to learn about the richness of God's word and his love for you. I encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our new videos. Each video is crafted with prayer and purpose, designed to help you grow in your faith and to bring you closer to the heart of God. Lastly, I invite you to continue watching our videos. Whether you need more encouragement, want to dive deeper into a particular topic, or simply wish to spend more time in God's presence, there's a video on this channel for you. Let these messages be a source of strength and inspiration for you, as you continue your walk with Christ. Remember, life in its truest form is found in Jesus Christ. Without him, we are nothing.